If you're a fan of the TV show The Office, you probably remember when Michael Scott was having money problems and he made an important declaration. He said, I declare bankruptcy. And Oscar the accountant came along and said, Michael, surely you understand that just by saying the word bankruptcy doesn't change anything. And Michael says to him, I didn't say it, I declared it. And that brings us to this week's Coin A Corner. We're going to talk about pronouncement imperatives. Let's take a look. Pronouncement imperatives are imperatives, which are commands, in the passive voice, right? So in a passive, uh, you're not actively doing something. Something is being done to you. So this is a command in the passive voice. It can't be fulfilled by the recipient of the command. So the person receiving the command can't do the thing that's being commanded. And the thing that's being commanded is generally fulfilled at the time of the command. So it's a rhetorical device that signals uh, the occurrence of something, but it's being signaled strongly in the use of this passive command. Now usually, when we think of an imperative, a command, we expect that the person receiving the command is going to act on it. They're going to do the action of the command, even if the command is negative, like stop doing something. So if we think to Jesus healing the paralytic at Bethesda, he says, rise up, take up your mat and walk. And the expectation in all three of those imperatives is that the paralyzed man is going to do the action. Rise up, take up your mat and walk. But in the uh, pronouncement imperative, the paralytic can't do the thing being commanded because the thing is in the passive. It's something that would be done to him. So, um, so that makes a big difference. It's a rhetorical device that signals something is being done to the person who's receiving the command without an expectation of them doing it. Let's take a look at a few examples. First up, we're going to look at Jesus talking to the disciples after he curses a fruitless fig tree. And they are wondering about their ability to uh, do wonders like Jesus has. This is uh, Matthew chapter 21, verse 21, and this is from the ESV. And Jesus answered them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will happen. So let's look at the quote that Jesus uh, said to the disciples. Artheti kai blefeti eistein thalasan. So artheti from Iro, it's an aorist passive imperative second person singular. Be taken up. So remember when we talked about Jesus and the paralytic, the second command was to take up the mat from this same verb, Iro. But here it's in the passive. Be taken up, kai uh, and be cast into the sea. Um, so, so here we have this uh, incredible pair of imperatives in the passive. Be taken up and be cast into the sea. Not take yourself up, not commanding the disciples to pick up the mountain and throw it into the sea. The command is from the disciples to the mountain telling it, be taken up, be cast into the sea. So if it were in the middle voice, we might say that Jesus is telling them to command a mountain to take itself up and to throw itself into the sea. But obviously in the context, this is about an initiative by the disciples, not the actions of a mountain. Can a mountain pick itself up? Not that I'm aware of. But let's look at a stronger example that frames the pronouncement imperative better. This is Jesus interacting with a deaf mute. And this is in uh, Mark chapter 7, verses 34 and 35. And I've placed 
our pronouncement imperative in the verse in Koine. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, uh, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. So our pronouncement imperative here is dia noikveti, dia noikveti, uh, which is again an aorist passive imperative second person singular, uh, be opened. Now, if this deaf person could have his ears opened and his tongue loosened, if he could do it on his own, if this is something that he could do to himself, do you not think he would have already done so? So the command isn't telling the guy to do something. He's speaking to the man's closed ears and says, be opened. And then what, what are we told? His ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. So this is a story about what Jesus did for the man, not what the man did for himself or could do for himself, or not something that his ears could independently do, right? That's not what this is. The pronouncement imperative is the rhetorical device that signals the occurrence of the miracle. When Jesus said the thing, the thing happened. The man who received the imperative, the, the deaf mute man, didn't do the thing. Jesus did the thing to him. The pronouncement imperative signals the occurrence of the miracle. Let's look at a, a, one more example. It's, I think it's even a little bit stronger. This is Jesus interacting with a leper. This is in Mark chapter 1 verses 40 and 41. Again, I've placed the pronouncement imperative in the verse. And a leper came to him, imploring him and kneeling, said to him, if you will, or if you desire from fellow, uh, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I will, I desire, be clean. Uh, katharisthe, katharisthe so again, aorist passive imperative, second person singular, uh, katharisthe, be cleansed. Uh, so again, if this leper who's suffering the worst social condition that can exist for a human in his time and place, he's unclean, he's unapproachable, he's untouchable, he's unlovable, he's un irredeemable, this is a guy who is an utter outcast till he's going to die from this disease. If he had the ability to cleanse himself, surely he would have, right? Clearly. He, he implores Jesus. He pleads with Jesus. Jesus does the unthinkable and touches him and <clears throat> issues this command. Be cleansed. Be clean. And then we're told um, it's clearly not about him. It's about Jesus doing the thing. And then we're told in verse 42, and immediately the leprosy left him and he was made clean. So look at the dynamic in that verse. The leper, who is the recipient of the command, katharisthati, be clean, be cleansed, does nothing. The active agent in verse 42 is the leprosy. The leprosy left him, right? That's the, the verb, the subject of the verb left is the leprosy. And he was made clean. The leper is the passive recipient of the, of the cleansing. So it's everything that we've talked about with the pronouncement imperative. Jesus' pronouncement declares the miracle, right? The words aren't the miracle. Jesus touches him and cleanses him. The leprosy leaves, the man is made clean. But the pronouncement imperative is the rhetorical device that signals the miracle. The man who receives the imperative can't act on it. He can't make himself clean. So Jesus didn't just declare it in Michael Scott fashion. Jesus pronounced it because that's how the pronouncement imperative works. It signals something being done 
to the recipient of the command that the, that the recipient can't do uh, him or herself. Pronouncement imperatives. I do declare they make grammar great. Thanks for watching today. I hope it was good for you. If so, like, share, subscribe, do all the youtube -y stuff, hit the little notification dinger. Let your friends know if you're finding value in the channel because the more people that watch, the more that the algorithm drives our content to others and uh, it makes it easier to continue to produce this content. Thanks for watching. Again, I'll see you next time. Karis Kyrene Humine, grace and peace to you.